Welcome to our worship service for Ash Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022. Let us center ourselves and be in a time of prayer during this Ash Wednesday service. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect forgiveness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, we begin today a 40-day journey toward Easter. We enter the Lenten season to prepare ourselves to welcome the risen Christ with lives renewed by the breath of his spirit. We assume a discipline of self-examination, confession, and pen penitence. We, dis we dedicate ourselves to meditate upon the scriptures and to converse with God in prayer. We seek to be more faithful disciples of Christ whose lives are shaped by the one whom we confess to be Lord and Savior of the world. To the end, let us worship God. Hear now this reading from 2 Corinthians, beginning in chapter 5, verse 20b. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See now, see, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. A reading from the Psalms, Psalm 51, 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless, blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O God, open my lips, 
and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. The next reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Be beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you go pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, 
Put oil on your head and wash your face so that you fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In his letter to the Romans, the Apostle Paul states the theological belief that baptism is the turning point in our new life with Christ. Through our baptism, we turn away from and leave the life of sin and death behind us, and we turn toward Christ to be born into a new life that is eternal. Hear these words from Romans 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we who have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too might we walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. In Life Transformed, The Way of Love in Lent, the practical theologians Hilary Raining and Jennifer Gamber share how the ancient church ritualized this turning away from sin and death and turning toward new life in Christ and the central role that the ritual of baptism had in this process. Candidates for joining the church were known as catechumens. They would spend months studying and preparing for their baptisms. At the night of the Easter vigil, they would enter the baptismal waters of new birth and emerge as members of the body of Christ, the church. During the Easter vigil, Catechumens would stand on a hair shirt as a mark of penitence. They would confess their sins and renounce Satan and all the forces of evil in the world. As they renounced the powers of evil, they would turn toward the West. This is the direction associated with death since the sun sets over the western horizon.
Then they would turn toward the east, the direction of new life and resurrection. By this physical act of turning, they spiritually and symbolically affirmed their turning away from sin and death and their commitment to turn toward the way of love and new life in Christ Jesus. At the break of dawn, as the sun began to rise and the Easter celebration of Christ's resurrection began, the catechumens would make their profession of faith. They would walk into a large font. Some of these fonts were shaped like crosses. Others' fonts were shaped like coffins. A jar of oil would be poured over their heads, and they would be dressed in a white garment after their baptism. Finally, these new Christians would be ushered into another room where all of their Christian sisters and brothers would greet them. The room was lit with the new fire of Easter. The community would join together in celebrating communion. And for the new Christians, this was their first Eucharist. The baptismal ritual in the United Church of Christ may not be as elaborate as that of the ancient church, but it still involves a turning away from sin and death and a turning toward new life in Christ. The one being baptized embraces Jesus' way of love as his disciple. The candidate is asked, do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? To which they affirm, I do. This question involves a turning away from sin and death, a turning away from the powers of evil in the world. The candidate is then asked, do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And the candidate again affirms, I do. This profession of faith is a turning toward new life in Christ. Lent is a time for us to renew our baptismal vows, a time to reaffirm our turning away from sin and death and turning away from the powers of evil in the world. It is a time of reconciliation, confessing that which prevents us from fully turning toward God. And Lent is a time of renewal as we deepen our faith practices and turn our life in Christ, responding to Jesus' way of love with a heartfelt yes. During Lent, we recommit to living into our baptismal promises to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ. As each of us lives into our baptismal promises during Lent, we as a community reaffirm our core values as a congregation, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love one another as Jesus loves us, to teach and model Jesus's way of love. As we deepen in our discipleship journey 
this Lent. We give thanks that the Holy Spirit empowers us to turn away from the ways of death and turn toward the way of love, the new life we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. From ancient times, Christians have on this day searched their hearts and sought to be cleansed from sin. They have sought reconciliation with God and with one another. They have received ashes marked on their foreheads as a sign of sin's disfigurement and of their own mortality. God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, in fear, but also in hope. We come together with ashes on our heads. The planet is dying in our hands. People turn to each other for food and strength only to be shoved away. Each day we deal in death, yet pretend that we are good. Let us, let us take 40 days to look hard at our so-called goodness and see what it covers up. Then we shall join together in taking up the cross of living in the world as it is. For there is only one earth. And as far as we know, only one human race. Join me in prayer by responding to each spoken petition with the words, Hear our prayer, O God. Let us pray. That as disciples of Christ, we may start using our hands, feet, money, time, and energy for the good of the poor, let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O God. That citizens everywhere may realize that care for their neighbor consists of more than mere giving of money. Let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O God. For the needy, that they may not have to remain despondent and alone, let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O God. For all of us here, that we may be honest enough to admit 
what we are selfish about and what we can do to remedy our lack of love, let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O oh God. God. For those who share Christ's charity towards sinners, let us pray to the God of mercy. Hear our prayer, O oh God. Merciful God, the ashes are our pledge to take up the cross of life. We come from the earth and we go back into it. In the meantime, beginning these 40 days, we will try to live here and make it a better home for everybody through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news of God's reconciling world love towards all and believe through Christ God chose to reconcile the whole universe, making peace through the shedding of Christ's blood upon the cross to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, through Christ alone. Holy God, through the discipline of these 40 days, Make your spirit's cleansing fire burn within us. Lift us from the dying embers of our inattention. Mark us with the sign of your holy passion. Make us ready to respond to the call of Jesus Christ. Amen. Here ends our worship service.